start recording. All right, so what we're going to do today, so I want you guys, you'll want to open up a window thusly. Uh, a new file. You guys don't have to set it up like this. I just do this so you guys can see. Um, so you guys know, I'm going to save this, uh, OneDrive classes. The uh, second hour, yeah. So we're going to go over while loops. Now, a while loop is an if statement that never, ever, 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 ever ends. So we've started with x is 1. If x equal equal 1, print x. Right, that looks familiar to you guys, right? Thank you, Josh. Yep. Nope, and x doesn't equal 1, so i got to go x is 1. So here we go. So it's always going to print x. It only does this line once. Now, watch this. The difference between these two lines is one word. Instead of if, I have while. So I'm going to comment this out using Alt-3, like it was on the quiz. And when I run this, what do you guys think is going to happen first off? Going to print X just once? But I can't. I'm stuck in a never-ending loop now. Because I don't have any code that changes X, nor do I, nor can I interfere with the code once it's running like this. So, so what, nope. If control, you get what's uh, how do you copy something? What's the shortcut for copy? It's the same thing for stopping here. It works on pretty much every computer, even on a microphone. Yeah. So control C. So if you hold control and tap C, keyboard interrupt. It forces it to error out, so it stops the code. So I'm going to run this again. Control C, keyboard interrupt. Now this is very, very, very useful to know, obviously because you guys are going to get into loops in your games. Uh, and you could accidentally have a never-ending loop. In our game, we actually have to... Uh, this is our game running. And then at some point... Okay, so all I've done, this is our game running. Wait, what? Oh. This is our game running, right? This is me playing my game. I'm running around. I'm hitting buttons. I'm hitting buttons. Oh, I died. So that's how we're going to code our game. We're going to have a loop with our game that's running everything. And we're going to have some if statements in there that are like, if my health gets below 100 or gets to zero, we're going to change what x equals and we're done. Uh, if the timer runs out, we have the winning code. If we lose health, we run our losing code and we jump out of the loop. Now notice, uh, if that's commented out, Will our game ever not run? Or will our game always run? This is our game running, 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 until we run it, until we interrupt it. Does that make sense to you guys? The reason it never ever ends is because we never ever change X. If you have a while loop, you need to in that loop, change this. Whatever this is, whatever variable, you have to change it in some way. There's a couple ways you could do this, right? I'm going to make x 0. And while x is 
less than or equal to 10, we're going to run this. It's good. Now we're, we're still going to get the same never ending run, ne uh, never ending loop. This is our game running. I can make x equal 100. How many times will this run then? Josh? How many times will I see this is our game running? Just in this whole code, in those four lines of code, you can ignore those two. Oh, it's never going to get to that. Point. It's going to do it once. Care to explain, Josh? It, it printed it before it redefined it. Yes. So x is 0. When we get to this line, what is x equal? 0. Is x is 0 less than or equal to 10? Yes. OK. Then it prints, this is our game running. We redefine x. Once we get here, it then loops back up to here. x is now 100 once we've come up here. Is 100 less than or equal to 10? No. So then it goes here. So the way this works is our loop here. Can I zoom in? No, I can't. I need to change the color, though. What color? I went with the first one I heard. So x is 0 here. Here, x equals 0. And then as long as this is true, if that equals true, it will loop through here an unlimited number of times. Does that make sense to everyone? Obviously, once x is 100, this is false. So then this all right here is part of the while loop. So that's the only thing that will get that will repeat until this section is false. Once this is false, it goes to the line that is even with the while loop. That's why indents are so important in Python. Because indents determine where loops and if statement blocks start and end. Does that make sense? Do you guys have questions? Really? No, that makes a lot of sense. OK. Uh, yeah, it's very logical, because it's a computer. Now. Oh. I was just gonna like say it like nine times. Eleven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Do you guys understand why it's eleven? Yes. We start out at zero. Is zero less than or equal to ten? So it's this is our game running. X now equals zero plus one. What does X equal at the end of this line right here? Is 1 less than or equal to 10? Yes. All right, so then it just loops through here until x equals 10. It prints this is our game running. x equals 10 plus 1. What does that equal? 11. Is 11 greater, less than or equal to 10? No. So then it jumps out, and that's the end of the loop. Does that make sense? Is that really is all there is to a loop. A while loop. Now you can set up while true. And this will never ever end. I mean, if you keyboard command it, but while true, that means as soon as it gets to that line, it doesn't need anything before it. Here, just like an if statement, we have to have x defined before we compare it to anything, right? If we, okay, thank you. 
So if we comment all this out and we just have this line, it's still going to work. I don't have to have a predefined variable or anything. This is while true, run. So essentially, once it gets to that line, boom, it's going to run the code. Josh and then Catherine. Uh, is there an easier way to do like, you know, repeat a certain number of times? Yes. Uh, that's a for loop, and that's what we're going to learn later. This is, this is the, the biggest difference between a while loop and a for loop. While is based on a condition. It's a condition-based loop. How many times is my game going, how many times will I loop through my game until my character dies? No. How long can you survive on a level in a video game? How many times would you cycle through the code? An unknown number, not infinite. So if I'm playing Call of Duty Zombies, which is a, it's a never-ending wave game until you die, how, how long... How many times will I have to iterate or go through my game code? I don't know. It's a condition, not a count. Now, if I have a for loop and I want to go through the number of students in this class, I want to display each student's name. How many times will I have to go through the loop? Two, four, six, eight, ten, because I got Ezra virtually. I'll have to go through ten times. So could I do a while loop just like this? Yes, but there's another way to do it, and we're going to cover that Friday. For now, we're just going to focus on while loops. Now, the cool thing about a while loop is, like I said, it's a condition. So, oh, I can't do that. Uh, what's another word for continue? Next. What's another word for continue or next? Uh, to carry on. is input I'm sorry Catherine you had a question uh, uh, for the true line um, what is the true of like what is the false then it won't work like true like it's it's a way for you I think you can also just do while no so if you just want something to work, if you just want a loop to start with no previous condition, then you do while true. So it starts as, like, um, if I open the file. Essentially, yeah. You, you don't need anything before it. Well, so, uh, so let's jump up here real quick. So x is 1, x equal equal 1. Right, so while x equal equal one, print yes. So while what does x equal equal one evaluate to? True. So we're shortening this instead of putting an expression that equals true or that evaluates to true. We're just putting true there to to force it to go. Anyway, you change it to false. While loops only evaluate, only run if that's true. Now I could put, and that would work. Wait, wait, no, what I'm saying is, like, is there any way you can turn that if statement off if you put true there? What if statement? The if statement with the true. We don't have an if statement with the true. No. The while true. Like while not if statement. Can you turn that off? Yeah. The only way you can is if you um, if you com command keyboard it, or if, I think if you just type false. Nope, that doesn't work. Yeah, no. As far as I know, no. So that's like a never ending, you can't, unless you break your code, uh, you can't stop it. So I don't recommend using while true. Well, we're going to, hang on. There actually is a way you can break out of that. I just got to see when we learn it. We'll learn it in just a second, but there is a way to break out of that. Actually, let's just get it right into it.
Break. Break, no matter where you are in a loop, breaks you out of it. However, it only breaks you out of one loop. So what does that mean? It breaks it out of. So notice it prints x, y, x, y. Because while true, it prints x. Then it goes while true, print y. It breaks out of this loop, comes up here, and then starts all over. If we, don't, if we don't have that, it's just going to be x, y. We're going to have one x followed by a bunch of y's. It breaks the loop above it, not the loops above it. It's only it only breaks once. Josh. But could you have to break somewhere else in the code? It has to be in a loop, but I could do this. And that'll just give me x, y. Because I have I have two whiles, so I have two breaks. For every while you do it would need a break. This is something that confused the last class last year. If you have while true, you have to have break. While true needs break. Also, if you have while um, x is 1, while x equal equal 1, oops, print Oops. And then immediately have break. What is this node different from? An if statement. That's exactly right. So if you have while something break and it only loops through once, it's no different than there's no point to having break if you don't have any commands or anything else in your code. So, for example, uh, Can you, have, like, an else in the while thing? Uh, you can have while else, I think. Well, carry on equal equal yes. When you are done. Anyone know that song? Carry on my way with some. No. <clears throat> no. Um, so now let's do X is or user is. That was an accident. That's a typo. If user equal equal. Okay. I'm making stuff up just so you guys can kind of see. Um, if break and then else uh, print let's. Continue. Um, tax is a hundred times 0 0.06. This doesn't make sense. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. So this is our code. So what it's going to do is it's going to ask us to continue. Do we want to continue? We click no, nothing happens, right? Because is carry on, does carry on equal equal yes when I type no? So it doesn't even go into this line. 
doesn't even go into this section of code. So let's run it again. Do I want to continue? Yes. Mario, go be peace when you are done. Answer. No. Oh. Uh, uh. <coughs> now I'm stuck, right? Yeah. But if I type OK, it breaks me out of the loop. So this can be, uh, let's see. Do you want to continue? Yes. Do you want to quit? Do I want to continue? Yes. Do I want to quit? All right, so I'm in a loop. I have to click OK to get out of it. So that's a time when you would use, you can use break. Now, there's also one other thing. At the very beginning of while loops, I said what. In the loop, you have to redefine what. X, the variable, which in this case would be carry on. You could do this, right? Which again, you will need to do at some point, right? In our game, we use break, I think. What we can also do, actually, I think I'm getting ahead of us. Yeah, I'm getting ahead of us. Let's just go back to this right here. Do I want to continue? Yes, 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 yes. So this would be used for, do you want to enter in names of a class? All right, let's do that one. Do you want to start? I'll carry on, yes. Okay, I know I'm getting a little, I got a little spazzy there, so I apologize. So we got a half hour of this. More like 20 minutes because I have to show that video. Do you guys understand what this is doing? Input, do you want to start? What is that doing? It's verifying that this loop will start. When you play a video game, does it say, do you want to start? Yeah. Yeah, at some point. If you have a menu or something, press A to start. Wall carry on is yes. I tell them what to do. I then give them a place to put it. And then do you want to continue? Does that make sense? Now, if I'm asking for names, I should probably store those names. Yes, Catherine. Right, yeah, because right now I don't do anything with this information. What's one way we know how to store information? Say what? Like someone can like store it, like make it like taking their input. Turn into a variable, yeah. So we're going to get their the name. What type of that variable is this input? String. A string. Do we know how to put strings together? Yeah. How do we do that? So like names is what should I put here? Name. No, not sir. Uh, what? what? Yes, yeah, so what do we need to do? Eh, no. No, what do we want to separate? Right? Because I don't I don't want a string of names that's this. I can't spell Mikey. Uh, plus, uh, okay. Comma. Comma. That'll give me this. Space. Throw a space. There you go. This is a. This is our database of names. We have one more error. 
When we run this, we're going to get an error. Who can find it? If I had candy, I'd give it to the first person. P no exit no, no. Nope, you don't need that. That is not the error. I don't know, it's too small for me. Let me see. Why don't you sit closer? But I need to charge my surface. I found the old extension cord. Oh, no way. Actually, we may not have an error. Let me run it and find out. <laughs> oh, there is no error. <laughs> yeah, I get candy. Because I bought the candy, Josh. That's why I get the candy. Okay, so I have. N let me see. Hmm. All right, so what happens when we run this? Wait, it's not storing them. All, all I'm getting is the name I typed in. So this was the error. We just had an error before my error. If we just have name, if we have names equals name plus, we're not actually storing anything. We are taking the name they type in. We're adding a comma and a space, and then we're and then we rewrite it with the new name. If you want something to be stored, you have to have the variable equal the same variable plus something. Names plus now let's see if this is it. This is my this is the error I was thinking about. But I don't see how it works. No, you have to do names equals names plus name plus space. So you're saying Yeah, because your input is name. Okay. But we also have to deal with this one, this error. What is this error? Name. The word name looks so weird. Yeah, it is so much. Anyway, so what do we need to do? We can't define something as a cell. We have to define it before we do anything with it. So what should names be? What's an empty database filled with? Uh, nothing. Nothing. So how do I make a nothing variable? Yep. That's the equivalent of number equals zero. Before I do any math with it. Eh, I don't. All right. So there's Zach. Ooh. There we go. Now I'm storing, so I have what my name was equal. I'm adding the new name plus a, parent, plus a comma and a space. Notice that even when I'm done with the last name, it still has a period in a, or a comma and a space. Congrats. Thank you. Can you do the one thing you're telling us about where you like subtract something from the end of the line? It doesn't apply here. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you can actually print. Um, so that would be negative 1, negative 2, up until negative 1. Do I want to start? Yes. Zach. Yes. Josh. Wait, what did I do? I typed yeah, not yes. Yes, Zach. Yes, Josh. Yes, David. No. Oops, oh, so it should be minus two. 
Do I want to start? Yes. Zach. Yes. David. Yes. Josh. No. There you go. So what this is saying, print everything up until the second to last thing. Each character is a number. So if you go backwards, it's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So you print everything because we don't have a start. It defaults to the beginning, to, to the second to last thing. We're not going to go over this. You guys don't need to know indexing, uh, not until list, so that would be next chapter. So you guys can kind of ignore that for now. Do you guys understand this? Yeah. Catherine. It's right here. How do I, hang on, how do I, pr what, do you need to use bathroom or something? No. No, okay. Um, so how do I add a comma and a space at the end of each one? So every time I add name, two names, I'm also adding a space and a comma right here. Oh, no, that's fine. Because without this, it just throws everything together. Yes, Zach, yes, Josh, no. Zach Josh. But if you throw comma space, it, it'll actually separate those out. Questions? Comments? Go for it. They do? Probably. No, if I had to guess, they there's a driver that takes uh, the input, so the joystick up, and gives it a value. Uh, and then that driver takes that value, converts it to something that your game understands. So your game understands, uh, like a computer game is keyboarded to, or is coded to work with a keyboard, obviously. And so when you plug in a controller, you have to have a translator that translates up to a keyboard button, and then your code works, if I had to guess. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Do you guys... Yes, Mikey. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can chop a little bit. I have to show a video. Oh, you guys can go to lunch at 12.10? Wait, what? Okay, so show the video. I have to show you at 11.47 because it's 18 minutes long. Okay. Oh. We'll call you eight what? I don't know. It's it's a, it's a link that I'm supposed to show you guys. 846, yeah, because I'll probably get lost. So what I want I'm gonna leave this on the screen. What I want you guys to do, this is in class for you guys to work on stuff and I can answer questions. What I want you to do is to create a while loop that asks people for a budget right so if I can do this with names you can do expenses equals zero and I want you to ask the user for a number of expenses so do you have another expense do you have another expense if they say yes get that expense and add it and once they say no to asking for expenses you display how much they've spent does that make sense okay so let me I will show you what the output should look like I'm gonna leave this on screen yeah but I got a couple people looking at me um, EXP. Make sure the input's a float.
So this is how your output should look. Please enter an expense, or do you want to enter an expense? It depends on how you start your loop. Um, I entered in 10. Do I want to continue? Yes. Please enter an expense 100. Do I want to continue? No. I spent $110. Because I don't know how many expenses the user has. So I'm going to continue until they tell me no. So this is how it should look, give or take. Um, it depends on how you write it, how you wrote it. So that's what you're going to work on for the next few minutes. Um, and I'll give you a couple for homework will be write a while loop that does this. And it's just a quick, like I, there's not going to be a problem. Your homework will look something like while x equal equal 10 print x while right it'll be something like that you just write a bunch of while loops so that you start understanding better how how loops how while loops loop okay all right so Oh, good. Ezra's been able to see my screen the whole time. Whew. All right, I'm going to stop this.